What's up guys, this is Gesture of None and welcome back to another Ancient Warfare tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about farms and also the quarry, which is not a stone farm as I might be tempted to call it. And the reason we're doing this is because it's not necessarily simple and obvious all the things that, that farms require, all the things that we can, can be done with farms and all the different things you can use them for. So I'm going to go, do my best to go through all the settings, all the ways you can use them and um, we'll see what we have at the end. So let's get started. The first thing of importance are these four farms. Now, these four are all run by farmers, by NPCs holding a hoe. Uh, and that's that's just that these are the ones that interface with um, with those farmers. And then these two are run by special NPCs. The quarry is run by a miner, which is an NPC holding a pickaxe. And then this one is run by an NPC holding an axe, and that makes him a lumberjack. The This is the animal farm. The animal farm is used to farm pigs, cows, sheep, and chickens, and you will get anything that you would get normally from farming them yourself. This is used for red and brown mushrooms, and this is a mushroom farm. Fish farm can pick up fish and ink, and that is all different types of fish. I believe it will also fish modded fish, but that may or may not be true. I haven't tested this with all the mods, so in some cases it may fish modded fish, in some cases it may not. And finally, the reed farm, which farms cactus, cane, and cocoa beans. And then if we go over here to the special mod farms, or the special blocks, I suppose this isn't a farm, like I said, this mines everything apart from it sometimes skips modded blocks, and of course, as well, it needs upgrades to mine things like obsidian and diamond, and we'll talk about that in just a little second. And then the last one being the tree farm, which farms all forms of normal tree, and then with some modded ones, it will plant the saplings but won't harvest the wood. So um, just be aware of that. And I haven't tested it with all, but I can tell you, for example, for the fir tree from Biomes of Plenty will not be harvested but will be planted. So um, just be aware of that. It's a little bit strange, but it, you know, there's ways of working around it. So uh, the next and most important thing, probably, of this whole thing is this little setup I've got here. This little setup is to show you that it's not actually necessary to have an NPC to run one of these farms. This I've talked about the same thing in my power tutorial, but um, I thought I'd make the same point here. The crop farm just needs power. All of the farms just need power. They don't actually need an NPC. They just need some energy to go into them. You see here I have a resident energy cell from Thermal Expansion, and that is giving power to this crop farm. The reason it's doing nothing right now is because it's got nothing to do. But if I go ahead and take some bone meal and just shove that in there, you'll see that it starts doing a very rapid job of growing these things and harvesting them. So there you go, that's just to make the point that it doesn't actually need any NPC, it just needs power. So there you go, it's only limited, like I said, by the amount of work it has to do and the speed in which power can go into it. The second thing is that I have been guilty of this mistake before, of thinking that Ancient Warfare does not connect with many mods, that doesn't. it's not possible to connect certain mods to Ancient Warfare. I will tell you now, this is almost definitely untrue for most mods. So Ancient Warfare works exactly like every other mod in terms of how it interfaces. You have sections that are, or sides rather, that are input and output, and sides that interface with different areas or different inventories within the box. Here you can see we have actually three inventories for the box, and obviously this is my inventory. You have the special resources inventory, the resources inventory, and then the top inventory, and this is where things would go like seeds and wheat. Now by default, the top is set up to up, and that is the top inventory. The bottom, which I believe is the middle inventory, is set up to down, and the front, which I believe is the special inventory, is south. And this depends on the direction of your block, and that is a very confusing thing about Ancient Warfare. It depends quite a lot on cardinal directions, so, I mean, you'll just have to get used to it, I'm afraid. So what I've done here is I've set up the left side to be the top inventory, so when I connect anything here, it connects to the top inventory, which is this space here. The top of the box is also connecting to the top inventory, but there's nothing connected there now, so it won't do anything. And as you can see, on the left side, I've not set up for anything, and it's unable to connect to this item conduit from Ender.io. But if I go into sides and set the right side as top, you will see that it's now connected, and that if there was anything in there, it would go in. And this is all the stuff that we had in there. So you can see now that you can watch it putting stuff into this, into this chest. So there you go, that's just to make the point that Ancient Warfare really can connect to uh, other systems. And also that's just to show you how to use the sides tool. Now, the best way to use this, I'm afraid, is just to play around with it until it works. Change a setting and see if it's moved the thing you wanted to move. If it hasn't, change it again. Go through each setting and, and try and figure it out. It gets a little bit easier with time, but it's a little bit complicated and a little bit hard to explain. But really, you just hit one of these buttons until what you want to happen happens. I'm afraid that just is Ancient Warfare, in my experience. Maybe others out there have figured out better ways of using it, but this is my experience with it. So let's move on to the boundary blocks. Now, the boundary box is a little bit confusing and a little bit weird. The first thing I need to show you is just how to actually turn your boundaries on, because I play with them off by default. Uh, and I'll turn them off after again, because they kind of annoy me. So um, all you have to do is go is hit Exit, and then go on to your Mod Options, scroll down to Ancient Warfare, and then Automation Module Config, and just flip it to True if you want them on, and flip it to False if you want them off, and then hit Done. 
And now you'll see all of these little boundary boxes that uh, allow you to like sort of more clearly define what you're doing. Now, inside each menu of each farm, there is a bounds box, a bounds section. So you can see here that the red represents the size of your farm bound box, how much space is actually covered by your farm. And the blue represents your farm block, the actual block that does the work. So here, if I click this button, it extends the farm all the way out there. Now, the confusing thing is that if I want to extend out in the other direction, like this, it will put the boundary box all the way over there rather than centralizing it. And you'll just have to centralize it yourself. Now, this can be very confusing because in your game, you're changing the position of the boundary box. But in this screen here, you're actually changing the position of the farm. But rest assured, what is actually happening is that your boundary box is moving to fit with where you've put your farm. So if I just let's just even this out for the sake of um, for the sake of putting it in the middle. If I put this here, this box here, the boundary box will now move to the center like that. And if I adjust this like this, the boundary box will be off in the corner over here. It's a little bit confusing, but you have to get used to it. The thing is, it wouldn't be so bad apart from the fact that these settings are relative. If I turn and try and control this box and I increase the size, it will increase it down. And then if I want to move the, the farm block, I'm going to have to use north and south instead of west and east. And I'll just, just give that a very clear demonstration. If I use north and south here, it doesn't do anything. So um, I'm afraid you just have to get a very good sense of the directions of north and south in Minecraft and then do your best to adjust these as best you can. Just to be absolutely clear, use the plus and minus X and Z buttons to make it larger or smaller in terms of height and width. And it, that's always the same. But to move the box, to move the blue farm box, it's either the north or south, north and south or west and east, depending on the orientation of your farm block. So there you go. It's a little bit confusing and it's definitely caused me a little bit of hassle in the past, but hopefully that explanation will help. If not, honestly, Ancient Warfare, like I said, with the, um, the automation system in there, you, you kind of just have to do your best to, to muddle through it. And eventually it sort of makes a little bit of sense. So let's get rid of these because they're kind of annoying. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn off my bounds, but um, I re rest assured the bounds are there. There we go. So the first farm we're going to look at is the animal farm. Now, I've already let this do some work. So there's some raw beef and some leather in there. Now, the animal farm, like I said, processes all kinds of animals. And it's got this special setting here called other. And that is just to tell the farm what kind of animals are in there. You don't actually have to do this. If you only put cows in there, it's not going to be a problem. But let's say you want cows and chickens, but no sheep and no pigs. And there's a chance of sheep and pigs wandering in there. Then you want to just set these to naught so you don't ever get any sheep or pigs bred and set it to four for cows and chickens, for example. As I've got only cows and no chickens, I don't really need to have any chickens set on there. Now, the main use of this is to prevent you from having a very overpacked animal farm. So, for example, here, whenever there is more than four cows, they will be killed. That's why there's only four left. But if I set this, for example, to 40, like so, and then give it some resources to work with because it needs wheat to, to actually do its job to breed the animals. If I give it that, it'll start breeding them. And this would go all the way up to 40. And let's just speed up its job a little bit so we can see. There you go. That's a thoroughly annoying amount of cows, but it's not even close to, to 40. So it's still breeding them whenever it can. If I go ahead and switch this down back to four, there you go. You can see every now and then a cow dies in there. I believe it will always breed a cow before it kills it just for the sake of having, I guess, more safety in the number of cows. You're not going to lose all your cows, but you can see they're starting to die off. And that is because they are now over the maximum amount. OK, so that is the job of the animal farm. And um, you can see this reasonably simple. If you can put whatever animal you want in there of those four that I mentioned, chickens, cows, pigs and sheep. And it's reasonably simple. All it needs to work is energy and wheat to breed the animal. Or, for example, if you're using pigs, it needs carrots and chickens, it needs seeds. And all the resources it produces will be up here in the top. Now, before we move on, this is a good opportunity to show you one more thing about bounds that I didn't cover. It's a little bit confusing to explain, but the bounding box starts its work and in most cases finishes, it work, finishes its work at the level that it's currently on. So here, the bounding box is placed on the same level as the farm and any cows in this, but not below it or above it, will be harvested. With a fish farm, the bounding box is placed one level below the fish farm so that it doesn't have to be underwater. And fish will be harvested from this layer of water, but not from this one below. And that is true of every single bounding box, apart from the mine, which harvests 
everything below, which goes straight down within the bounding box, all the way down to the, the bedrock and further if it, if it could, I guess. So there you go. That's just an important point about bounds. Let me go ahead and turn those off now. Okay, onto the fish farm. Fish farm isn't particularly complicated. You have the sides option. You just tell it which sides are, are which so that it can uh, it can be used a bit more easily by other systems. The bounds section, which is just this big black square and it's just exactly like any other one. And then also you have the other section and that is just to tell it whether you wanted to harvest fish or ink or just fish or just ink or neither, which would be kind of pointless. And there you go, that's, that's really simple. It'll just pick up any kind of fish. I don't believe it picks up modded fish, but it's not an impossibility. So the next one, and this is a little different, is the mushroom farm. The requirement for the mushroom farm is that it is actually dark in there. So um, this space I've made dark using ethereal glass, but it can just be, you can just completely block it off. That's no problem. And this can take red or brown mushrooms. I happen to have put brown in, but it will prioritize the first one in this list. So it, um, if you want red, you may as well just put red in because it will use however many it has. The only thing that's special about this, and this is a good opportunity to show you this, is that you have to tell the mushroom farm which spaces aren't worked. And by what I mean by that is which spaces won't be used for planting mushroom, but will be used for harvesting mushroom. Here I put it in a checker box pattern. I don't know what the most efficient is because I actually don't use it often, but just that this will probably do the job. So here, what happens is that anytime a mushroom spreads to any of these blocks here, it will be harvested. If I grab some mushrooms here and start planting them, it will be harvested every time I put it on this block, like so. But if I place it on this block, it won't be harvested because this block is a growing block. So there you go, I put the mushrooms in this pattern so that hopefully they'll spread out as efficiently as possible to the other mushrooms next to it. But that's for you to lock into the, the dynamics of mushroom growing in vanilla Minecraft. There are other ways of using this ability to control harvested versus worked land. But for now, for the mushroom section, that's the most important thing. You have to set this up, otherwise it will just plant mushrooms and not harvest them. And the last thing to say about the mushroom is that it can also plant nether wort, but you also have to put down soul sand in order for the nether wort to be placed. And it's exactly the same deal. In order for it to spread, it has to have a block free set up in the bound section. So moving on to the reed farm, the reed farm can harvest cactus, reed, and cocoa beans. It's for all of the odd crops in Minecraft. So in order for the cocoa beans to be planted, they have to have jungle wood. For in order for the sugar cane to be planted, it has to be sand or grass next to water, and the cactus just needs sand. And that's really all there is to this section. I prefer to use it for just one at a time because it looks kind of messy in there. But every time it grows up, it will be harvested, um, provided as energy and provided they're in the bounds. And I believe those two out there are being missed by the bounds. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit wider. There you go, all these should start being harvested now. Yep, there we go. And that is the sugarcane farm. As you saw here, the bounds are very large and that is because I've applied a bounds upgrade to this. And I'll show you how to do that now. All that needs to be done is to take a bounds upgrade. This one is a medium, but I can apply a large and then shift click and then that applies it. In creative, the bounds upgrade in my inventory is not gonna disappear, but usually you can only apply one to each farm. And that will allow you to push the bounds to a bigger size. And you'll know that it's worked because you'll be able to increase the size of the box. But without it, it would be limited, I think, to the original six by six, I think it is. Next up is the crop farm. Now the crop farm is used to harvest any form of normal crop. And I believe that is all the Minecraft, all the normal Minecraft crops. I can't speak for the modded crops. Like I said, I haven't tested it with all form of mods, but its job is to plant and harvest those crops. Now, like we talked about at the start, it will only do anything when it has any work to be done. So in this case, there's actually no work to be done here. All of these seeds are growing and that is Minecraft's job. But as soon as they're harvestable, the crop farm will harvest it and then it'll use up that power and the farmer will put some more power in it. It's advisable to put a block of water here because the crop farm can't fertilize with water. It can't turn the ground from dry ground into wet ground. It can only till it. So it's advisable to put this block of water in the center just to speed things up. Otherwise, the crop farm will be expending all of its time turning normal ground into farm ground over and over and over again. So it's advisable to put a piece of a block of water there. And the next thing is just that it can use special resources. So in the special resource section, if we put a little tiny bit of bone meal like so, it will go a lot faster because it's able to speed up the growth of crops, but that also takes more power. So it's up to you to either give it enough power to do that fast or to not put bone meal in because it can also slow things down given the fact that it takes a lot more power to do one more crop. The bone mill just speeds up growth a little bit, but it also takes more power, so it requires more farmers or a, a bit a better power source. So just something to be aware of. Next up is the tree farm. Now, this is a good time to show you a problem that can happen with a tree farm, which is that the trees can grow to insourcel the NPCs, and all you have to do is just free them, and they'll go back to work. But it is worth, knowing that it is worth putting in a small section around the bounds 
like this, for example. But it can still happen anyway, so maybe this will help a little bit, but, but really just be aware that it can happen and, and go ahead and check every now and then. So the tree farm will plant, like I said, all forms of vanilla oak saplings. It will also plant a lot of mod saplings, but won't always harvest the trees. It really has to have the oak wood or a vanilla wood to trigger the harvesting, and then even it won't detect the modded woods as things that need to be harvested and just like the others it has a special resource it can use bone meal to grow saplings faster but it gives it more work to do now you can see here that it turns into a big block of trees and wood which is not necessarily the most attractive so in a bit we're going to go over a way to do that a little bit differently but for now that is the tree farm it's actually rather simple and it's just just going to remind you again the tree farm needs a lumberjack to work it or another power source but if you're going to use an npc it has to be a lumberjack not a farmer despite the fact that it is called a tree farm now the mine may be one of the most complicated but also one of the most useful let's go and have a look at our mine at the same time we'll let our miner go in there here he comes off he goes to work now he's going to give power to that block and he's going to start mining away at this stone here there you go you can hear it disappearing now the reason you can't see it disappearing is because he mines i believe from the left to the right all the way along to the front here. The mine, just like the fish farm, starts at a level below the block. You won't actually be able to see the fact that he's mining here. All you'll be able to see is the fact that the blocks are covered. So when he gets over here, you'll see. There you go, he's broken through, and now we can see that he's actually mining this whole level. If we go down, we've been very lucky, we've hit diamond straight away. I'm trying to block that out though so I can see. There you go, he's mined out all of here, but he won't take the stuff off the top. That's our job. So let's just clear that out. So that's just for you to know that the block won't mine anything above the level of its work area. Now, the default mining block will not mine diamond and it will not mine obsidian because it's at the level of an iron pick. If you want it to mine diamond or obsidian and if you want it to mine faster, it needs to be given upgrades. Let me show you the upgrades. In order for it to mine obsidian and diamond, it needs to be given upgrades. So these are upgrades for a slightly improved tool, tool quality. I don't know what in quality, but it's definitely not diamond. I believe it's just actually from um, stone to steel. And then if you want it to be able to mine diamond and obsidian, you need to give it diamond quality tools, which is what I've just given it now. And it'll take time, but it'll eventually get there. And that forces out the previous the previous upgrade. So I've been able to take that, take that back. You can also enchant it. And there's light enchantments, which I believe are great to fortune one and looting one. So if I apply the light one, there you go, then it should get a little bit more diamond than normal out of there. We can probably see it turn up. Well, it got one. But if we put the highly enchanted tools upgrade on there, it should get a few more because that equates equates to luck two, I believe. Well, there you go. We picked up two, two diamonds from there, which isn't actually particularly fantastic. But there you go. It'll do its job. It'll mine right down to the base. And all the other systems work exactly the same. You have a sides and you can change these. You have the bounds box, but you can't tell it where not to mine, I'm afraid. That's just not possible with the quarry. I don't really actually know why. Now, the upgrade to the boundary box is actually slightly different. It's just called a quarry upgrade. And you have a, a medium and a large, but no small, because I guess it's already at the stage of small. And you apply that by shift clicking and that will allow you to make your bands much bigger. And I mean huge. I'm not going to put it huge because it'll start mining out things that I don't need it to mine out. But, um, well, it can do that. And then, and that way you can have a very, very extremely large quarry. I'll tell you that the smaller your quarry is, the faster it'll work because it doesn't have to go across, across, across. So if you just want to drill a little test hole and see what kind of, um, what kind of resources you have down there, then you can have the quarry do this for you and have a little test slot drilled just to make sure that it's actually worth it's actually worthwhile mining down there. So that is the mine. Not too complicated, uh, but still worth its own special little section. Okay, that's a good description of all the farms and the quarry. So let's move on to a few tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that maybe will allow you to do some things that are a little bit more interesting than just having these, these farms doing their jobs. So the first thing I've set up is just a little kind of like prop area, but it's just to show you that things can look nicer than just a tree farm being worked by some poor lonely woodsman. This is a little bit of a trading post just to make things look a bit nicer. And over here, we have a tree farm. Now, I've set it up already with bigger bounds, but what I want to show you is that you can use the bound setup to have a little bit of a nicer looking tree farm. So here, I've blocked off almost everything, the whole place, and just put in a few red squares that can be worked. I've really limited it here. There's only 13 or so workable spaces, and the rest is just harvesting space. But what you'll see happen is that this makes a much more attractive tree farm. There you go, and I'm just going to grow them all with bone mill so we can see how it looks, or anything that will grow anyway. And as you can see, instead of having just one big block of trees, we have what actually looks like a little, a little forest that's being worked by a woodsman, which is a lot more attractive. I'm going to bone mill up the ground a little bit so it's a little bit more foresty. There you go. And you can see now this is much more attractive than that big block of wood we had over there. It really looks like a little forested area that's being worked, especially if you turn off bounds. 
you can see that it just looks like a forest and every now and then when it's got a small amount of power and I'll give it a small amount of power with a hammer every now and then when it's got a small amount of power which is what I'm giving it now it'll start chopping down a tree and when it gets a sapling it'll place a new tree but it just keeps it looking like a little forest here I'm working it quite fast so it'll start really destroying the trees but even then when it's just being worked by one chap and when it's got enough saplings it'll keep replacing the trees you'll never see a single tree on its own you'll never see the place completely empty it'll just be trees at different stages of growth you can even put a very very large box or several of these and make a large forest a very nice looking forest that's being continually worked always changing form but always looking like a little forest and it's just a lot more attractive than the traditional way of growing trees for farming it's just a lot less like a big block of nothing so there you go there's a little tip to make your your tree farms a little bit more attractive but it's up to you to decide how you want to do it and just to go over it again the way that you do this is just to have this bound section ticked off quite thoroughly so there's only a few very limited places to grow trees so now that we've seen the tree farm let's move on to our next little room here I don't often use the enchantments or the upgrades but I wanted to make a quick test so that I can show you and so that I understand them perfectly myself that shouldn't be growing so uh, the test basically is just that these two crop farms here have exactly the same resources sorry that little uh, potato that was growing there was left from uh, setting it up and uh, they have both of them like I said exactly the same resources exactly the same chance apart from this guy here has the upgrades and I want to see exactly the margin if I leave it going for like I don't know five minutes two minutes whatever if I leave it going for a little time exactly the margin of improvement that the tools upgrade and the enchantment upgrade give it so let's get started and I will hit this switch here and we'll see what happens I think immediately there will be quite a sizable jump although it does seem like that one got 10 faster but if you look here this is 44 this one is 46 this one's already up to the second stage well okay they're doing well let's leave them going i'm going to move because i can't hear myself think let's leave them going and we'll move on to this next little tip that i have here so here we have a nice little house and next to it is a tree farm and i'm going to go ahead and have some trees planted i don't need to actually plant some trees and watch them grow i'm just going to show you if wood is placed here in the middle of the patch it will harvest it if it is placed in the sky above the patch at the exact same place it won't harvest it if they're connected it will harvest both so that should tell you that if I build some wood out here and then drag it into the middle and connect it, it will harvest it almost all the way back to the center, almost all the way back to where it started. Now, if you have a house too close to your tree farm, it will be harvested. It is made out of oak and it does a very good job of working the whole way through your house. So this is just to be aware of the fact that the tree farm uses some very specific rules. If it's not wood touching the, the floor, the actual work area, then it's not going to harvest it. If it's connected to wood that's touching the, the harvest area, it will harvest it all. And obviously this is, sometimes it goes too fast for itself and it doesn't harvest um, everything. So like it'll leave some small pieces and that's fine. But the problem is <laughs> when it, sometimes it can harvest just about everything. I had a whole wall destroyed in my village because of this. So now you know. And the second thing is just that anything chucked in these areas will also be picked up by the farm, whether it's uh, related to your farm or not. So I'm just going to throw this hammer down. And that gets picked up too so that's just another thing to know about it maybe you can use that in some interesting ways but it's just to know anything in these work bounds will be picked up and i think there are some rare items that won't be picked up but um well that's just to know anything chucked in here will be picked up okay let's just check out our last tip while this is still doing its last final bit of work and this is just to know that the farms can be worked from a distance so here we have two animal farms worked by two farmers and they're actually under the ground by, by quite a way there's this three blocks diagonally in between them now they've got no resources so if i just give them some wheat they'll be able to get to their jobs and there you go you can see that this guy is working this block underground he's not even looking at it so there you go that's just to show you that he will do his job whether or not he can, I can actually see the box so you can hide the boxes quite a lot you can even cover it completely at the front here and the job will still be done so that's just to show you that you can do other forms of system other ways of setting things up and still have it work pretty well i don't know what the limit is but i'm guessing it's around six blocks because i've had similar problems in the past with this but um there you go you can actually bury the farm and they'll still be able to work it so let me repack this guy and the last thing to show you is that you can power these blocks yourself if you haven't got any power system set up and if i just give this guy wheat you can actually give these blocks enough power to the job themselves and that is by creating a hammer and all you have to do is work the work site with shift and then right click and you can see the power is going in quite fast and if i had anything to do it would do its job so let's um reduce the amount of cows to one and you'll see very quickly that everything dies off and you can see in the top here in my little blue section that power is going into the block and that is true of every single work site if i go over to the 
farm over here, if I work this, it will all be chopped down. And it does it at a pretty reasonable rate. So if you're looking for some farming, some way of, of harvesting things a little bit faster, then uh, this is a good option for you before you've got your power system set up. Okay, and now we can go have a look at the results of our little test here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the switch, and we're just going to wait for it to stop. It'll just take a second for all the power to run out of all the systems. So let's just, uh, I'll just cut through to then in a second. There you go, it's nice and finished. So, let's check out the number, actually I'm just throw you to the window. Let's check out the number in here. This is 17 stacks of 64, and I'm going to ignore the 47 because I don't think it'll matter. And then over here is 10 stacks of 64. So there you go, the results are actually quite clear. This is a little under twice as much as the non-enhanced one. So in future, for all of your Ancient Warfare things, it's worth just trying to apply an upgrade. And by the way, this is also a good demonstration of what I talked about at the start, that really don't need anything to do with a NPC to run this stuff. This is all Ender IO, and this is a Jabber barrel. So, um, you know, there's no, real, uh, there's no real need for NPCs. But that wasn't the main point of this. The main point of this was how much more improvement you get out of using enchantments and upgrades. I will say, though, for weak, it doesn't make a huge difference. It's just for things where there is a small chance of getting an extra item out of the fact of having better luck or so on. So, I think this covers everything. So, let's go back to our main starting area, past to our lovely little forest, which has been processed a little bit, which is quite nice. And then over here, I think we can leave it. So, we've covered... This is a nice little house that I didn't get a chance to show you. There it is. So overall, we have covered the different types of NPCs that are used in the different types of farms. We've covered what all the farms could give you, and we've covered how to automate a farm without using NPCs. So I think that is about it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If it's been useful to you, let me know in the comments below. And if you've got any further questions, don't hesitate to ask because I'm always around. And if you're looking for other Ancient Warfare tutorials, don't hesitate to check out my other videos because I intend to fully cover Ancient Warfare as much as I can. But until then, this has been Gesture of None, and I will see you next time.